I've, I have so much freaking hair room in this frame. This is crazy. But I kind of rocks with it. I kind of I kind of rocks with the frame. You just got to go with stuff that you like, man. I'm experimenting with frames right now, and I'm just enjoying this wider look. Over the past couple of years, I've filmed projects on a ton of different cameras. Canon, Sony, Lumix, even Nikon. I'm just now realizing though that I don't really enjoy using hybrid mirrorless DSLR cameras anymore. And it's probably not the reason why you think it is. It's not a quality thing. I think that all of these cameras are capable. All of these cameras look sharp. They all look good. And you create some great things on all of them. And honestly, if you put the look of a hybrid mirrorless camera next to the look of a cinema camera, you're probably gonna enjoy the look from the hybrid mirrorless camera nine times out of 10, just because these new hybrid mirrorless cameras look so freaking sharp and sharpness is what a lot of people look for. So it's not a quality thing. All of these cameras are capable. I've just compiled a couple different reasons why I am just gravitating towards using my cinema camera over my hybrid mirrorless camera. And this could be some insight for somebody who wants to get into the cinema realm, or this could be a confirmation that cinema is just not for you. But regardless, Let's hop straight into it. The first reason why I'm grabbing my cinema camera over my hybrid mirrorless camera is built-in ND filters. This is probably one of the biggest reasons. For a really long time, I've just flat out despised variable ND filters. I don't like them. They are incredibly inconsistent. They shift the color. You get to the end of your ND range, you get a crazy X across your image. They turn super blue, they turn super warm. They're hard to match colors. And I would even prefer to use a hard stop ND over those. But even then, I just don't want to have to bring ND filters with me. Once you have experienced having ND filters inside of the body of your camera, you just can't go back. It's just a luxury that you just have to live with at that point. I just love built-in ND filters. And another reason that built-in ND filters are so great is that some lenses have protruding lens elements. And you aren't able to even attach an ND filter to the end of those lenses. So the fact that it's inside the body, you have consistent ND, you have consistent color, and you know you just got ND on you, that's just one of those things you can't live without, man. So once you experience it, you cannot go back. The second reason I'm just gravitating towards my cinema camera over my mirrorless camera is that I just have better frame rate options. I shoot music videos, so frame rates are big for me. It's cool to be able to dive into the frame rate settings and just give my image a different look than 24 frames per second, 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, or 120 frames per second, which is what the majority of Canon and Sony hybrid mirrorless cameras do. They're great. Those are solid frame rates. And the majority of people don't need anything more than that. But being able to go to 36 frames per second or 48 frames per second or 72 frames per second or 96, these are clutch and I just love them. And in music videos, sometimes I want to do slow motion performances where the artist's mouth is on sync with the song. And this is incredibly hard to do with 60 frames per second because you have to increase the tempo of the song to so fast that the majority of artists can't perform at that speed. So being able to go into 36 frames per second and speed the song up just a little bit makes all the difference when you're trying to do effects like that. Lumis cameras for a long time have had variable frame rates and that's why I've loved them, but <laughs> Uh, just using a cinema camera like the C70, having those additional frame rate options is incredible. And this isn't a C70 video. I don't want to make it a C70 video. I think it's just a cinema to hybrid mirrorless and DSLR. If I mention a C70, that's just my experience. The next reason is battery life. Man, when I'm shooting, when we're shooting BTS on my R6, we are easily running through four or five batteries throughout the entire shoot of a music video. And this is a hassle because not only do we have to bring these batteries, when I come home, I gotta charge them. And it's like, unless you have the charger with all the different battery slots on it, you just charging them one by one. It's kind of a hassle. With my C70, even though it's not a C70 video, <laughs> um, I throw one battery in there and I can run it for like 300 minutes. I got a time indication of how long the battery is gonna last. So I know I'm not looking at the notches on the screen, trying to figure out, oh, I got half a battery left. I got 25 minutes. Like, no, it's literally accurate down to the minute. I know how much time I have left on my battery. So with this camera in particular, the batteries that you can use for are just great battery life wise. I understand some cinema cameras don't have great battery life. Some cinema cameras have <laughs> terrible battery life, but this one right here is great, especially for long shoots, man. I did a BTS for Epidemic Sound Project a couple months ago, and I was able to just run it all day off two batteries. It's great. 
I wasn't worried about overheating. I didn't have to bring eight batteries with me. It's just a great experience, man. Having that extended battery life and not having to worry about dummy batteries with a V-lock plate, like, I don't, it's just, I don't know, man. I understand not all cinema cameras are like that, and some cinema cameras have worse battery life than mirrorless cameras, but in this one right here, the battery life is one of the biggest reasons why I'm gravitating towards it. The next reason is audio options. Having a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and being able to use the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus or like some of the wireless Rode microphones is great for the majority of things, but sometimes you need better quality audio. Having mini XLR inputs or just XLR inputs that are full size gives you access to some way higher quality microphones. Like way, it's like, it's like literally night and day. When I did this BTS project for Epidemic Sound, I used my Rode NTG4 Plus shotgun microphone. The audio was crispy. I got some really good interviews. It literally synced with the clip. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to have an external recorder. It's just a breeze, man. And this also powers these Phantom Power microphones as well. So I don't have to worry about the microphone dying and none of that stuff. It's just, man, having uh, XLR input, gives you access to some of the highest quality microphones out there. And it's great, even if you're doing short film stuff or documentary stuff, being able to record those sound effects in camera is gonna save you a load of time. The next reason why I'm gravitating towards my cinema camera over my mirrorless camera, this one is debatable because honestly, <laughs> the mirrorless cameras are getting so much better at a rapid pace, but I'm gonna say dynamic range. And like I said, it's some mirrorless cameras that are giving you external recording options that's giving you additional stops at dynamic range. You got external raw. So this isn't necessarily prevalent in all of the hybrid mirrorless cameras, but dynamic range on cinema cameras just tends to be a little bit better than hybrid mirrorless cameras um, right now. The fall off in tone just tends to be a lot more smooth. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I'm gravitating towards using my cinema camera over something like my R6. Even though you can create some really nice looking stuff on these cameras as well, um, and the gap is getting smaller and smaller, I just find that in cinema cameras, the dynamic range just tends to be a little bit better. The next reason why I'm gravitating towards my cinema camera over my hybrid mirrorless camera is customization. Now, I wouldn't say the customization is better on my cinema camera, it's just more buttons that I can customize. On mirrorless cameras, you can obviously customize different buttons and you can you know, manipulate the layout however you want it to be. But when it comes to cinema cameras, you have a lot more buttons. Like you have buttons that are labeled with specific actions. You can even go into the menu and change these out if you don't want them to be that way. So it's not necessarily better. It's just more buttons to customize, which I find to be a lot more faster when I'm on set and I'm moving around, I need to do a specific action. And the next reason that I'm just gravitating towards my cinema camera over my hybrid mirrorless camera is shutter angle. Shutter angle is a luxury as well, man. You don't have to worry about compensating with the shutter when you're switching a frame rate. If I'm in 24 frames per second, and I go to 60 frames per second, or I go to 120 or 72, as long as I have 180 degrees on my shutter angle, I'm good to at least get the standard look. And obviously I can manipulate it if I want it to be a little bit more speedy or I want to capture a little bit more of that motion blur. But if I have it at 180 and I switch it, I don't have to get home and realize, dang, I forgot to crank my shutter speed up to twice the frame rate and I totally butchered the shot. Having that shutter angle just makes it so much faster to film in the majority of situations. Now, obviously all of these cameras are just tools and to be completely honest, my hybrid mirrorless camera, my R6, is finding its way into a lot of my productions right now just because of its size. So that in itself is a luxury of having a smaller camera. If I'm filming a suction cup car mount shot and I don't have all of the expensive rigging options for my C70 and a full build, I'm gonna pick my R6 up and just mount it to the window with a small lens on it. And that right there is one of the biggest reasons why it's finding itself in a lot of my productions. If I'm trying to rig up a crazy shot of a bike in front of the artist riding down the street with a super clamp, it's not gonna hold my C70, but it can hold my R6 with a small 16 millimeter lens on it. So these are all tools. Cinema might not be for you, but if you're looking to get into it, these are the reasons why I love it. And these are the reasons why I don't really enjoy a camming a small mirrorless uh, camera. They're great, they're sharp, and they do have benefits in being small and sharp. You can throw them on gimbals, they are fast to work with. But man, it's something about using a cinema camera. So that's just my philosophy. Let me know down in the comment section though. What's your favorite camera? What camera are you using right now? I would love to know. I wanna try out some new stuff, man. Drop this video a like if you enjoyed it. I'm out, peace.